And good morning, welcome back to another video. Hello dogs. Hello. Why are you not excited to see me? Hello. Well, you could look a little bit more excited, I guess. There we go. Hello. What are you doing? What are you saying, mate? Well, you're dogs, you're not saying anything. Anyway. I made an absolute, an absolute fundamental F up. I'm not gonna swear, but I made an absolute fundamental F up yesterday. I forgot to wash my kit after I finished my ride. And I still haven't washed all my stuff since I've been home from Newcastle. Long story short, I would. Ow! Naughty. I woke up this morning and I've got no kit to ride today, so I've got him on a quick wash. It's got six minutes left, then I can dry it and go on my bike. As someone who likes to be prepared and likes to have things organized, ready to go, I honestly have let myself down with this one, haven't I? I really have. I've had a shave though, in other news. That's, that's a good thing. Sam's that excited to see me this morning, he hasn't even bothered to get up off the grass. Is that what I mean to you now, Sam? Everyone always asks me, why does Sam never make any vlog appearances? This is why. He doesn't want to be in them. He's not very social, as you can see. Come and see me. Please, show me some love and affection. Anything, there we go. Yes! Hello. That's better. That's better. Uh, I think it's only because he wants to come inside. Oh well. All right, we got one minute to go. One minute to go until the washing is washed. Yep, this is the peak of the excitement for my uh, for my Friday morning right now. Waiting for the washing machine to finish. It's done! This is, okay. Thanks for playing me that song. Thanks for washing my kit. Let's hurry up and dry this. Then we can go bike pedaling, okay? Unlock please, unlock please. Unlock, please, please, boosh! And we are finally out on the bike. Got some clean kit on, and we're moving forward. So, the day that I'm recording this is Friday. You'll be watching, if you watch on the day it goes live, it'll be Saturday, but today is actually Friday. So, that means we're two days out from Stockton Grand Prix, uh, which is this weekend, next national series round. Normally, I'd take the Friday as a rest day, uh, or as like a shorter spin and then do a pre-race ride Saturday, and that should leave me in good stead for, for racing on Sunday. But just this week, we're having two races already, and I'm racing again on Sunday, so that's gonna be three races this week. Just because I'm doing those three races, I kinda wanna keep my legs moving. I feel like if I stop, then I'm just gonna get real stiff and tired. So I'm gonna keep things moving today, and, and sort of go against the grain and ride today. I mean, I'm not gonna do a hard ride. I still wanna get a couple of hours in, just kinda of tapping it out, low zone two. No real, no real training stress, but I think it'll be a good way and a good beneficial way to keep the legs moving, uh, hopefully. And then, you know, should be going good on Sunday. But only time will tell. It's quite funny how long two hours feels when you're tired. Like I've done an hour and 30, and I've only averaged about 200 watts. Feels hard, man, feels hard. I mean, it's not been helped by by the wind that we've got today. It's a pretty intense wind, but woohoo! I know that I'll feel better tomorrow after doing this session today, but in this moment right now, I'm wishing I'd have stayed at home. Strategically trying to plan my route so I'm sticking to roads with high hedges. Doesn't seem to be working though. Check this out. It's windy. It feels like I'm back in Norfolk. So this is the current scenes. Got my lunch, a little bit of beans on toast, on the go right now with the tour plane in the background. Uh, it's a flat day, it's a sprinter's day, but I intend to sit here for at least another hour just resting. Because resting is something that I don't do very well, but this time of the year, I've got the Tour de France to keep me occupied. Resting, resting is important, and that's what I need to do right now. Okay, so about probably two weeks ago now, I got sent a parcel from uh, a company that some of you may, some of you may not have heard of, called Velo Skin. And, Basically, I've got—I mean, I've got all their products in this uh, in this box right here, which I'm going to open right now on the camera. Basically, what this company does is they sell. Got a nice little note from them here. Thank you very much, guys. And basically, it's kind of a cycling-specific uh, uh, skincare company. So we've got what's that? Some chamois cream, post-shave lotion, some moisturizer, and finally uh, some shaving cream. And well. Finally, some, some soothing gel. Now, I'm led to believe that this stuff is kind of specifically designed for like your legs as a cyclist, as someone who shaves the leg 
legs quite often. So these guys got in contact and said that they wanted to send me out a little bit of a care package and I said to them like straight up, you know, I don't use chamois cream i never have done I, i've never needed to this product probably isn't going to be for me to which they responded they recommend that i try it because even though that i even though i don't get any issues like with my saddle and, and saddle sores and everything even though i don't get any issues it's still going to make riding and sitting on a saddle even more comfortable than it already is so keen to try some of this i haven't tried it yet uh thank you guys thank you guys for the little care package they have even sent us out a couple of water bottles and I mean, who doesn't like some new water bottles? I will try all of these products in due course, uh, so stay tuned and I'll give you guys a little bit of a review. Probably not gonna film myself shaving my legs, but I will give you a review of these products nonetheless. Okay, I didn't bring my camera out on the dog walk because I didn't intend to do any filming because I, I mean, I walk my dogs every day and there's only so many dog walks I can, I can vlog and make seem uh, kind of half interesting. So we're on the phone, it's still broken. As you can see, it's like cloudy. Almost looks like cloudy, that's because the screen's smashed. Uh, I'm still in the process of getting it fixed, and once it is fixed, we can be back vlogging on the iPhone, because I kind of miss it, I'm not gonna lie. But, the reason I turned on the camera with the broken phone is because I wanted to show you guys the horrendous attire I've decided to come walking in. I guess I was half asleep when I left the house, because I've just come into the field, looked down at my feet, and realized I'm wearing socks and sliders in a field walking the dogs. Psych. Idiot. What an absolute idiot. I'm probably gonna get stung by a nettle. Or even worse, stand in some horse Okay, we're back out in socks and sliders. Absolutely allow it. Don't say anything, don't at me. We are at Sainsbury's right now because I'm trying to be um, organized and efficient and I'm gonna pick up some race food. Gonna get some cereal bars from the old Sainsbury's local. That will do. One of those. I don't leave until like tomorrow afternoon, but I just wanna be I just want to be organized and make sure I've got everything ready like tonight, the night before. It's kind of my little thing before racing. I just like to know everything's sorted and ready to go. So when I'm racing, obviously we've got energy energy bars, like the specific nutrition bars and everything, but, but especially for like these longer races, I also like to eat real food as well as like the energy bars. Um, just like, so it's not as hard and it's not as intense on your body. So that's why I tend to go for like, I don't know, maybe some flapjack or, these are great, like these chocolate brunch bars. Pretty standard kind of things, some oat flakes in there, chop, bit of chocolate, some honey. It goes down nicely in a race. But guys, I wanted to quickly kind of explain a situation to you people watching the video right now sit down because it's about to get juicy i'm kidding it's not really but recently you might have noticed on the channel there's not really been that many kind of race videos like onboard onboard race videos with the gopro where we show like the power overlay and show kind of how hard we're going and do a little bit of a race rundown and and all of that good stuff um some of the videos that i like some this they're some of my favorite videos to make and post but i've not posted any for a good few months now and i've had a few questions as to like from you guys ask me where those videos are are they going to be coming back and i've kind of been a little bit reluctant to reply to you to you guys because purely because i've been trying to sort the situation out like from my end so basically for those of you that don't know here in the uk you're not allowed to use an onboard camera in in a bike race it's just against the british cycling rules um i was sort of unclear on the rules as to whether you were allowed to use them or not um so kind of to my I guess arrogance, I just used it anyway, uh, didn't really think too much of it, and basically it's come around to bite me in the arse. Unfortunately, British Cycling haven't been too happy about me using my, my GoPro in, in races, and, and they've basically DQ'd me from, from pretty much every race that I've ever used a camera in, and also they've given me quite a substantial fine for using the cameras as well, and like, I'm not annoyed, I'm not angry, or, or you know, I don't have any kind of resent towards British Cycling, Rules are rules. I broke the rules. I hold my hands up. Like that's that's fine. That's fine. Like I broke the rules. I paid my fine. I've reluctantly paid my fine, but I've paid it. Um, I've accepted the disqualifications from the certain races, which include, by the way, um, the Preston Arena uh, crit that I won about two months ago. <laughs> Thank you. 
So yeah, technically I haven't I haven't won a race this year. But anyway, but even though British Cycling have DQ'd me and fined me and everything, I've been I've been trying to I've been trying my best to kind of work with them, and it seems like they are pretty keen to kind of work together with me. You know, I I am a British cyclist. I I race under British Cycling. You know, ultimately they provide the races that allow me to race uh, and also provide content on, but. I think like now cycling's coming into a quite a challenging time, like now more than ever, where brands and sponsors aren't coming to the sport and we're seeing teams close down left, right and center. In the last couple of years, we've had uh, One Pro Cycling and also JLT here in the UK have, have both just ended due to lack of sponsorships. And this year we've had the news of Madison Genesis folding um, due to their sponsors pulling out with quote unquote frustrations with the British racing scene. And I've also heard in the pipeline rumors of um, another team that may well be folding at the end of the year that's not been announced yet. But anyway, but I think it's more important now than ever for riders and teams to try to kind of bring something else to the table to innovate you know bike racing's been around for a long time and it's it's a hard hitting fact that the return on investment for sponsors and for brands is way way down and it's 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 just not it's just not feasible for a brand to invest in a cycling team and make money and you know everyone wins and like it's not a sustainable model and i think it's like nowadays in 2019 using platforms like instagram like facebook like youtube to produce content on these races that will otherwise get very very little attention i think like it's absolutely essential that we are allowed to do this and i think that it's taken a long time but british cycling finally seems to be coming around to the idea you know of like how important social media is and you know even me producing a video about Preston Crit I you know I'm not trying to big myself up or blow my own trumpet or anything but me producing a video of me racing and winning Preston Crit it'll get 30,000 views for example and that brings so many more people to the sport and it gives that little race on a Thursday evening that maybe 20 people will take interest in suddenly there's 20,000 people that are taking interest to that race one kind of really attractive thing for me about the onboard footage is having like the power data overlay and showing you guys in real time exactly how hard you have to go to make that bridge to the breakaway or how hard you need to go to, to win a sprint it just makes the viewers feel much more inclusive within that content and it makes it a lot more relatable and it's things like that which are going to help propel cycling forward to innovate to, to attract new sponsors from with like from outside the sport to make it look like a feasible um, investment decision. All right, sorry, I've probably got a little bit too passionate there and, and banged on far too much. Uh, but I guess the bottom line is I'm trying to work with British Cycling to allow onboard cameras. There's no reason why they shouldn't be allowed. I've raced in many different countries, including Spain, France, and also in Belgium. And in all of those countries, as well as you know, United St the United States of America and Australia, in all of those countries, onboard cameras are allowed. And partly because of that, the, the crit scene, for example, in America is absolutely thriving. And you know, part of that is down to how viable and how kind of lucrative that market is becoming due to social media and, and onboard footage and the content that is being produced around that 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 scene. But anyway, guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. Tomorrow, we're heading up to Mid Middles, 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 Middlesbrough in the northeast of England uh, for another race weekend. So thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like. And with that being said, guys, I will see you tomorrow at the same usual time of, no, 5 p.m. Peace! And I leave you alone.